Today we're looking at rest of season rankings, but we're doing it from the market perspective. You know, I'm all about the economics. You know, I'm all about the revenue. We're looking at, because I think gauging the market, the real market, and I'll tell you what I mean by that, as opposed to just fake uh, conversations you're having on Twitter or whatever, are going to be more realistic and more practical, more useful to y'all when it comes to trade targets, when it comes to guys that you should be targeting, how to value those players. So we're going to jump right in on this beautiful Wednesday morning. Tuck it in, flex your traps, and let us eat. So you might be asking yourself, what does Nick mean by the market? I'm not talking about Boston market. We're talking about the fantasy market. Why is there a draft board up on my TV screen right now? You might have rented out a movie theater to watch this video. I don't know what y'all are about on a Wednesday morning. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm on one today. What this draft board is right here is underdogs best ball resurrect. Okay, so a lot of y'all drafted tons of best ball teams over the summer, right? And then the season starts and then best ball goes out the window, except underdog resurrected it. So they have the best ball resurrect tournament opened again, and it is opened until October 12th, meaning you can go draft teams again. It's a $10 entry and there are huge money prizes. I want to say first place wins like a hundred grand, 300 grand or something like that. But the important thing to note there, I'm not promoting it necessarily, but I do think it's really, really fun to draft in these things is that every entry is a minimum of $10. So people are taking this very seriously. You are drafting guys for the rest of season in the order that you want to have them ranked. Now, the important part of this video, I drafted right here from the 12. We also have another draft that I did from the 101, and I'll show you that board and we'll kind of break down those as well. Again, the important part here is not necessarily looking at the team I drafted, but kind of looking at the board overall as where we are looking at certain players and where we have them ranked. Because here's the thing, money talks, okay? So everybody could say they want this guy or that guy, and I'd rank this guy above this guy. But when you got 10 bucks on the line, when you got 100 grand on the line, you're moving a little bit differently. And because this best ball resurrect tourney is relatively new, the ADPs are still kind of calculating. So when you're on the draft and you've got 30 seconds per pick, some of the guys that you still like are further down. So again, like don't necessarily go off of how I drafted a team or the player rankings bar for bar in here, because there's a little bit more that goes into the context. Unless you come into it with your own rankings, sometimes you'll whiff on picks and whatnot. But for the most part, we've got the community sentiment here. So I was at the 112 and you could see three running backs went off the board. C-Mac is the 101, Jefferson the two, and Tyree killed the three. That was actually kind of surprising because, I mean, I think we could all agree that C-Mac's probably the 101 right now, but I would actually take Tyree Kill over Justin Jefferson, despite how consistent Jefferson's been. And he actually is the wide receiver one, but I don't know. Something about that Miami offense, I still want to be completely invested in on that because if Minnesota continues to spiral, who knows what happens with that offense. But I was at the 112. Uh, I took A.J. Brown and Devonta Adams on the turn. Now, this is a start three wide receiver league. This is also half PPR. So it's one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, and one flex. So I just went with A.J. Brown, Devonta Adams. Now, Cooper Cup went the pick directly after my Devontae Adams pick. I'm actually optimistic about how this Las Vegas offense can run statistically. Wasn't high on it preseason, and I'm not like high on it, but I think we've, we're four weeks into the season, so now we have an idea of how all these offenses run for the most part, and it is so condensed. It is literally Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, and Josh Jacobs on every single target, and assuming Jimmy G is back, that's how the offense will run. We saw Aiden O'Connell kind of get in there and target Josh Jacobs over J uh, Jacoby Myers a lot, but I think when Jimmy G is back in the lineup, we'll see it be Devonta Adams and Jacoby Myers over and over and over again. So I went with both of those guys over Cooper Cup again. Like Cooper Cup is maybe returning to practice this week. Sean McVay came out and said a few things about like there's a difference between returning to practice and being at full game speed. I still fully expect Cooper Cup to be ramped up still. I don't know if he's going to be active for week five. I don't have a lot of confidence in being able to be confident about Cooper Cup in my fantasy lineup probably until week six at the earliest. So again, this is one of those where you're probably splitting hairs. I think there might be a a little bit more uncertainty just based on the fact that like Puka has just blown up. So maybe you're asking yourself like, is Cooper Cup ceiling one where it was 1,700 yards and 15 touchdowns or whatever? Does that does that con does that bring? itself down to like 1300 and and, thir and 10 touchdowns or something because Puka is getting the other half of that now I think you factor all these things in when you're redrafting a team right now based on what we know because there's no way Puka's going anywhere and it's a reason now he's a 
third round pick. But overall, you could see the first two rounds are outside of Keenan Allen moving really, really far up and Kenneth Walker. Like realistically, we're four weeks into the season and there hasn't been a ton of shakeup. Obviously, some players have dropped out, but for the most part, this is like a 70% of the same players that were kind of picked within the first like 24 or 25 picks. Keenan's really high. Taking Keenan at the seven over Amon Ra, AJ Brown, Devontae Adams, those guys is not something that I would necessarily do right now. I love that Ayuk pick at the 3-5. I, I don't think there's a draft. I think in the next draft I show you where I drafted from the 101, Brandon Ayuk went out like the 2-7, and I have no problem with that. You got to remember in the preseason when we were doing all these drafts, the 2-5 to like 2-7-8 range was where Alave and Devonta Smith and Jalen Waddle were going. And if you're going to tell me looking now at Brandon Ayuk, we're talking about for the rest of the season, knowing that he's healthy right now, seeing what Brandon Ayuk has done up to this point, if you don't think he's deserved of going where those guys were going in the middle of the second round preseason, you're out of your fucking mind. And here's where things get real interesting. This is where the running backs start to kind of cook up. You got Kyron Williams at the 3-8. And I'm going to be honest, man, I don't even disagree with it. The way that the Rams are using Kyron Williams, his touch counts have been crazy, and it doesn't feel like they have any signs of slowing down. Yeah, he might not be the most efficient runner, but he's good in every aspect of being a running back right now. He's a good pass catcher. He's a good pass blocker. He's getting all the work on the goal line. They are giving him insane opportunity. And it's very, very clear that McVay feels very, very comfortable with him. So so Kyron Williams right now, I, I think there are a handful of multi-touchdown games still left on the resume in 2023 for Kyron Williams. Devon Chan was the next pick right after Kyron Williams, ahead of guys like Derrick Henry, ahead of guys like DeMont, ahead of guys like Kamara, Jonathan Taylor, James Cook. Aaron Jones, which is really interesting. I get the upside play. I think I might be a little bit more hesitant there because Achan is is so efficient and he's going to have so many big plays, but I don't know if we ever see a world where he's getting, you know, even like the Raheem Mostert level of touches because he does have to share it with Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson will be back within a couple of weeks, most likely. So there's a little bit of extra added risk in that scenario. But I guess like, listen, at the end of the year, if uh, HN, who is right now, I think the RB3 on the year, ends up being like a top 10 fantasy running back when all is said and done, wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. So realistically, right now, he's going off the board at the RB11. Some other interesting call outs. We have Sam Laporta as the tight end three behind, or no, the tight end four behind Kelsey, Hawkinson, Andrews, Laporta directly behind him. Really interesting. And you had Nico Collins go one pick after him, Love Nico Collins. Love the fact that he has jumped all the way into that early fourth round. I would take him over DJ Moore, who went a few spots ahead of him. I think DK Metcalf is a super, super value there. He has shown to just be the absolute alpha in that Seattle offense. JSN is like not really involved, and DK just gets it done on a week by week basis. I think everyone like kind of wrote DK Metcalf off as this guy who's just going to get you like a floor, floor season, right? And it's like, oh, we've seen like his ceiling pretty much because the offense is so spaced out. DK Metcalf is 25 years old. There's a really good chance we have not seen this man peak yet and I feel like we're in the midst of seeing it happen right now I also think some of the other like best buy low candidates happen in the fifth round here you see Aaron Jones and Christian Watson those are two dudes that I want to be higher on than consensus going forward Aaron Jones had the monster week one missed the next two games with injury came back and was on very very limited snap count he should be full go the rest of the season and we saw what AJ Dillon isn't and it's a good complimentary to Aaron Jones I think this backfield is going to be Aaron Jones to the fucking to the moon going forward. And again, if you're drafting in this tournament, you're drafting. It doesn't matter what they did previously. It only matters what's going on going forward. He's back at practice. Christian Watson is back at practice. I think he's going to make magic with Jordan Love as well. And you get to put all the injuries and the bad shit behind him. So go draft now. This tournament is open for the next eight days, I want to say, until October 12th. So the beautiful part about this is it's a $10 entry. And if you go sign up for Underdog, if you're a first-time player, first-time depositor, the link to the App Store is right down below. If you use our code BDGE, B-D-G-E, it's going to double whatever you put down, okay? So if you put down 10 to play, guess what? You're going to have now 20 to play on your username. So now you can do two drafts. Go get the 112. Go get the 101. Go get the 107. I don't give a Go get your bag. And if you want to do one draft and play some Pick'em, they also have a completely free square for you. All first-time depositors get a free square for this Thursday night football game coming up. Justin Fields, 0.5 total yards. I know he's been bad. I know he's been bad, but he hasn't been that bad. He's going to hit this for you, okay? And anytime they even lose, like Aaron Rodgers got injured to hit the under on his, they ended up giving everybody the win for that square anyway. So enough with those stupid fucking comments. So go to Underdog Fantasy, download the app, deposit $10 or more. They'll they'll double whatever you put down, I believe up to $500. If you use our code BDGE, they'll get a free square. 
double it, go play some best ball resurrection with us. So Aaron Jones, Christian Watson are some of my favorite fifth round values. I still like Raheem Mostert. Tyre McLaurin is clearly getting healthier and healthier by the week and becoming more and more of that alpha. I think we still have that like that good or he's not that, that, that good of a pick for fantasy. So he's going at the end of the fifth round. That looks like an extreme value with how he's playing and how healthy he looks at this point. Brees Hall is probably a very talked about player. And I took him at the 6-1 on the 5-6 turnaround. And did I feel good about it? Not at all. But I have to believe that they can't keep watching him go out there, trying to run the offense through Zach Wilson, allow him to rip off 40, 50 yard runs every single week and not continue to ramp him up. This is not with the expectation that I want to throw him into my starting lineup right now, but I think all of us should have had this expectation going into the year that they were going to slowly ramp him up until he was the workhorse, right? This is like a week eight, nine pick when Brees Hall starts to get 75, 80% of the snaps, and then he is back to being the Brees Hall that we know and love like he was last year before getting hurt. So Brees Hall, listen, the later you could wait into the year, the more his trade value should be enticing to you. Each week that goes by and he does not have a big game should signal, okay, maybe this is the time to go grab Brees Hall. Maybe this is the time because it's going to happen. It might just be the last four weeks of the season, but those are important as shit. Those are what brings you home the hardware, the hardware. On a note for the QBs overall, those top three QBs for the most part are still going in the second, third round. You had Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes go off relatively early. Tua is now an early third round pick, which love that. Herbert, who is the QB one in fantasy right now, was the... 311 in this draft. Lamar Jackson at the 412 felt like a really, really good value there. A Rich now, mid fifth round pick right behind Lamar Jackson. I don't think that's too early. Justin Fields going in the seventh feels pretty ugly. I know that's a lot of bias based off the fact that he just did it against a historically bad defense in Denver, but there are some, I mean, there are some bad days. There are some good days ahead for him. But what I do love is that seventh round stretch of wide receivers. Tank Dell, absolutely deserved of being a seventh round pick. Jacoby Myers, Hollywood Brown and Romeo Dobbs. Love all those picks except for Jerry Judy because he stinks. But it obviously gets uglier and uglier as you go down. I thought getting Adam Thielen at the 8-1 was a super fucking good value. Uh, going after dudes like D-Hop and Cortland Sutton, uh, Deontay Johnson, who's still definitely hurt with a serious hamstring injury. The running backs got dry early. They got dry early. So there are just not a ton of good, like trustworthy running backs in the game right now. I think some decent buy low candidates would be Pacheco. I tried to kind of relay this to you guys over the last couple of weeks that I thought he was going to get more and more ramped up. So it might be difficult to buy him right now after that big game he just had on primetime. Uh, Damian Pierce has looked better and better. This offense is doing really, really well. And their offensive linemen are only going to get more and more healthy. After that, though, it is, it is, it is gross. We have no idea what's really going on with Jonathan Taylor right now, right? There, there are a lot of outcomes for Jonathan Taylor. Supposedly, he could be back this week. We're hearing like we a lot of weird vibes, a lot of weird vibes. He doesn't want to be there. Maybe they want him there. Maybe they're still trying to do a trade. I don't know if anyone wants a trade for him at this point, like Miami could have, but the running backs are doing so well that they don't really need to. It, it's gross out there. He might just sit out. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Typically, when those things are happening, I tend to side with the pessimistic outlook because I think more often than not, like 65, 70% of the time, pessimism serves you well in fantasy football because people tend to over hype, over exaggerate, overextend themselves with what their imaginary upside is for a player. So I don't imagine JT is going to sit for the entire year, but in my mind, and obviously I could be just flat out wrong on this, but in my mind, the way I look at a player like JT right now is like, okay, it's not going to be a wash for the year, but I think I give I, I give it like a little bit of padding. It's like, when is he going to be useful for my fantasy team? Probably not week five. I almost, in my mind, I'm like in that two to three more week range in a sense, right? Like, does he sit out? Do they pretend that he has a lingering injury still for like the next two weeks or three weeks or something like that? Does he need a week to get like ramped up in the NFL game? Is the first week he's back against a really tough matchup kind of thing? You know, like all these things should just kind of be thrown on the con side when you're thinking about this in your mind and that should just slowly creep him down the rankings for you right like you should just say okay JT will be useful second half of the year I'm not really expecting him to be a guy for me for the next like two or three weeks and that could change right like in that that way you prepare yourself for worst case scenario which is usually the best way to operate as it relates to fantasy football and most things in life if you have a contingency plan if you do not you know disappointment only comes from high expectations okay Life, business, 101 right there. So with that being said, Zach Moss feels like a pretty good value down here at 9-6 because who knows what the fuck is going to happen. The upside of him hitting is really, really high. The downside, if you don't get a guy like Marvin Mims or Jalen Warren or Jared Goff on your team, 
you're probably going to be okay. So those are the guys I'm probably targeting down here. I also love Zay Jones down here, right? Like by the time this tournament kicks off, Zay Jones will probably be back in the lineup. And we saw how good he was in week one. He was about an inch away from two more touchdowns in week two, and then he got hurt. So Zay Jones is the dude that like I would actually try to buy low because you probably he might be on your waiver wire right now. That's really it. We'll hop into the other board really quickly because I realize we're like 20 minutes deep already. So this one I was drafting from the 101. I grabbed Christian McCaffrey. I took Alave and Jacobs on the turn there. Alave has just been consistent as shit. I know he's coming off of like one bad week, but he's been a guy who's getting double digit targets every single week um and then i took jacobs at the 3-1 which i think is really good value i think him missing all of the preseason we saw that kind of play itself out over the first couple of weeks right and he got ramped up slow but then last week he started to get back into shape and i think it's only going to be much better things going forward for jacobs so to get him in the 3-1 very happy about deandre swift on this note at the 3-7 is probably a really really good value like one more game and i think he becomes a second round pick at the four or five turn i taught i I grabbed two guys that I just talked about saying that I really like them at the value is Christian Watson and Terry McLaurin as my wide receiver two and three. So at this point in the draft, we have C-Mac and Josh Jacobs as our RB one and two. We have Alave, Watson and McLaurin as our wide receiver one, two and three. And you can see a theme of a lot of the guys in this in, in my drafts or a lot of the teams I'm drafting in these is that I tend to let tight ends fall. I think Evan Ingram's been super duper solid. He's been one of the only consistent players in that Jacksonville offense. He's the tight end five right now in fantasy and continues to get drafted as like the six, seven behind guys like Kittle and Waller and sometimes Goddard. So Ingram feels like such a good value at the tight end position right now. Obviously, I want Kelsey, but I don't want to use the one on one on him. Um, Andrews and Hawkinson are great. They're fine, but I think I'd rather have skill players at those positions. And then Laporta, I, I just imagine he's going to hit a, a rookie wall eventually. So using like a really, really premier pick on him feels a little too dynasty for me but i grabbed pacheco another guy i thought was great value and i got my qb1 in brock purdy so i love the purdy and c-mac pairing and in my last draft actually i don't know if you guys caught this but i ended up grabbing dk metcalf and tyler lockett together and then geno smith as my qb1 so i've been waiting on quarterbacks as well because i think once you get past like the fourth or fifth round if you don't grab one of your quarterbacks those top guys like Allen hurts mahomes lamar jackson Tua, herbert maybe anthony richardson is in that tier but as you could see by the draft orders in, in both of these drafts he's kind of like the next tier i think the entire next tier is like the same fucking player Kirk, Fields, Trevor Lawrence, Goff, Burrow, Stroud, Per, like all those guys feel kind of like the same in fantasy to me right now. So I'm not overextending myself to grab any of those guys. But I took Purdy. Drake London has fallen all the way to the ninth round. So that's kind of disgusting. It makes me sick. But that's how I rounded out the first half of these drafts. All of these drafts are actually 18 rounds. So you're drafting a very, very large team because it is best ball. If you guys are new to best ball, you draft a large team and then underdog the software automatically starts the best players at each position based on the starting lineup that i said earlier so i hope that was helpful for y'all um i could do another one of these next week because i think this is live again for another eight days so next wednesday we could still do another best ball resurrection draft if this video was helpful would you rather have just a straight trade target video where we were looking at that like most traded player percentage chart we did a couple weeks back me and jmo let me know what you guys want, and I will just follow those directions. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And most importantly, go over to Underdog. Use our code BDGE when you sign up and go get that double deposit bonus match. Plus that Justin Fields free square for Thursday Night Football. On the channel tomorrow, we will have a full Thursday Night Football preview video for you. Mwah.